Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. Today, I want to compare the three different feet in the hopping foot set uh, that's designed for the Grace Cunique. And that foot set comes with a ruler foot, a micro stippling foot, and an open toe foot. So I'm going to stitch out with all three feet. I'm going to stitch one design, micro stippling. And my goal here is not only to gain more experience with that design, I really haven't quilted it very much on my long arm. I also want to see which foot helps me shrink my scale and get those stitches nice and close together uh, and I want to just be able to cross and compare and the best way to do that is to be able to stitch the same design. So let's start with a ruler foot and micro stippling. So stippling is a really unique design. You quilt it by stitching wiggly curving u-shapes and then I like to stitch this in rows. So you can see I've kind of worked a row of the design and then I came back and then now I'm interlocking with the row before it. You can see I'm running my machine really slowly. I am not moving very quickly. But the nice thing about it is the stitch regular re regulator really helps me. It keeps those stitches the same size and shape. Now I'm feeling like I can start shrinking my scale and you can see I've already naturally done that. I just brought those lines a little closer together. I'll admit, it, you know, this is a lot harder than it is on my home machine just simply because of the amount of time that I've spent micro stippling. You know, I usually have a lot more control and it's a slower movement when you're on a home machine so I can really get in there and all the nooks and crannies and stuff. This just feels, I don't know, it just feels like I'm, um, I'm holding my breath a little bit. I'll be completely honest, even though I'm talking. <laughs> I'm holding my breath a little bit and yeah, I just made a mistake and I'm, I'm tending to get a little bit too close and then overcompensate and getting a little bit further away. Uh, I would have to wonder if some of this has to do with the fact that I'm using the ruler foot, which has a full circle face. You know, it's, it's a full ring around. It's harder for me to see, even though I'm standing here and I'm looking straight down into that little pocket, into the hole of the ruler foot. I'm still not able to see quite as clearly as I would be able to, if, let's say I'm using the open toe foot. So let's try widening that scale again. I'll go back to maybe a quarter inch scale and I'll try and also speed up here. There we go. And you can see that's much easier. And I think a quarter inch scale with the ruler foot makes sense because with the ruler foot, you've got the needle in the center position. This is a half inch foot needle in the center position, that means you're a quarter inch from those edges. So visually, I think a quarter inch scale is going to be automatically natural and easy with a ruler foot because of that spacing. So I don't know that I would try and go any denser with the ruler foot attached. You know, if you're, if you're really wanting to get on a really, really tiny tight scale and maybe quilt around motifs and really make them stand out, then I think Maybe stitch the motifs first, if you're using rulers to stitch those motifs, stitch that first, get that outline quilting done, then switch feet in order to do your micro quilting. So it felt like it was time to switch feet and I have switched to the micro stippling foot. And this has got a really tiny base. Uh, it also has an open toe that's facing you. So you can not only see the needle, but you have, it looks to me like eighth inch spacing from the edge of that foot to the needle. And this is a subtle thing. It's just the light from the machine is running and hitting against the side of that foot. And I think it's a subtle thing that just gives you that visual guide. And yeah, this is definitely making it easier. I can just say I'm not feeling the need to hold my breath quite as much as I was when I you know, was quilting with the ruler foot. It's feeling a lot easier. I, can, I feel like I can see what I'm doing and that it's a little bit nat more natural to quilt on this scale. Uh, as far as getting it denser than this, I'm not sure I'm there yet. I think it's just going to take, you know, I might need to fill up every single black square in this entire quilt. And then by the time I finished that, yeah, it would be even on a you know, smaller, denser scale than this. Uh, you know, th that being said, you know, if you're trying for really dense quilting, let's say you're wanting uh, to really 
accent a motif. So let's say I had feathers right here uh, off the these little um, oval shapes, then yeah, you're gonna want to quilt really densely around that to make those feathers really pop and stand out. And that's really what dense quilting is for. You know, you don't want to try and cover an entire quilt with this stuff. Uh, it, it gets really time consuming really quickly, not to mention it's very tedious. So you don't want to fill an entire quilt on this scale. It's really meant for show quilts, it's meant to show off. It's meant to be an accent more than anything else. And uh, really it's meant to flatten out the background of your quilt and that way something else can stand out better. Usually a thick, you know, kind of bigger puffier motif. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of bounce on the quilt, so I'm gonna bring my hand down. I do have my ruler plate still on my machine. I pretty much never take that off. So because that's there, I can just put a little bit of fingertip pressure on the quilt and that stops any bounce. And that means that I am operating the machine now with just one hand. That's changing things up just a little bit. I am finding I'm kind of stitching the same repeating shape, so I've gotta watch out for that. Remember, you know, it's okay to stitch rows, that's fine. Just make sure that your rows are not forming the same shape over and over again, otherwise you'll be able to tell. So like, let's say if I just stitched up and down wiggly U shapes, if I did that often enough in rows, it would be, it would become very, very obvious. So I hope you can see, you know, just the difference between these two foot and two feet initially, the ruler foot versus the micro stippling foot. And already this is feeling more comfortable. And I do feel like those lines are getting just a little bit closer together. As far as my speed, no, I'm not very fast at this. You know, this is still moving, I think a little bit faster than I would be if I was on my home machine though. So that's a good thing. So one thing I wanted to mention right before we get started with this last foot is how to attach your foot properly so you're not gonna get skip stitches. So the first thing I do is I just get the foot generally tight, I just tighten up that screw just a bit, and then I drop the needle in the down position, and that's gonna be lowering the foot and the needle to the lowest position that the long arm allows. So then I take my screwdriver and I loosen the foot again, and then I pull down on it. So that way I'm taking that foot down as low as it possibly can go. And what that's gonna do is just, just going to ensure that the foot's not resting up too high. And I've noticed that when it rests too high, it can sometimes cause skip stitches. Okay, so this is the open toe foot. And I'm gonna try micro stippling with this foot now. And I'll admit, uh, I actually had a little bit of a break. It's the next day, and so I'm not warmed up. So this is me stitching micro stippling through here. And I'm, yeah, I'm pretty cold. So, <laughs> so I can definitely say this would probably be a lot better if I had warmed up and stitched something a little bit bigger first rather than going straight into this. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I kind of lost the audio in the last section, so that's why I'm reshooting this, so that way you can hear what I'm doing and see what I'm doing too. So here we go. I do think that I can see better when it comes to the visibility of this foot, and this is actually my favorite. Because it's so open, I have a nice wide space all the way around the needle. And this is more similar to the feet that I have used on my home machine. And when I had this machine set up as a table mounted long arm, I had a foot like this only set up so it uh, had an opening to one side. So I think for that reason, it just, it does feel a little bit more natural to me. But you know, I think this is something that just comes with time and practice. Um, you know, I, I feel like my stippling, even with the ruler foot, was pretty good. It's just a matter of getting it shrunk down to the size and scale that you're after. And when I showed this stitching to Dad, he was like, well, you know, any little mistake that you make, you're not gonna even be able to see it from a few feet away. And that's a really good point too, is that if you are stitching this and you're going straight to a show quilt or you know something that you wanna compete with, uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much if it's not absolutely 100% perfect. You know, you kind of just have to go with what you got when you got it, and the best practice that you'll get is from actually quilting the real thing, you know, quilting real quilts. I do think that the more I do this, the more control I'm gonna gain over the machine, meaning 
I think that if I spend some time working on micro stippling a little bit, then that's going to translate to being able to travel stitch and hit my points a little bit better. Definitely echo quilting. As you can see, there's quite a bit of echoing here in order to keep your lines a consistent distance apart. That's technically echoing. So I think stippling is a great skill builder for echoing as well. And uh, the quilt isn't bouncing around as much. I adjusted it so it wouldn't bounce around as much. So I've also been keeping two hands on the quilt and that helped as well. So overall, this is my favorite foot, but it's my favorite foot for several reasons, not just simply because it's a nice big open toe. It's just really similar to some other feet that I've used. But as you can see from this tutorial, you can do micro stippling with any of the feet included in the three piece hopping foot set. It really just depends on what works best for you. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do micro stippling with three different feet. And I can definitely say this is something that's going to get better with time. The more you stitch on a small scale, the better you're gonna get, the more repetition you get for the smaller amount of space. Now, on a long arm, this is challenging. You know, I'm controlling the machine and it's fine, tiny little muscle movements. And I'll be honest, I haven't really built that in my arms uh, and wrists quite yet. And so the more I do this, the better I feel like my stitching is getting. But really, ideally, the best way for me to practice this and really get the hang of it is to quilt it over an entire quilt. Don't really have time to do that, and I'm not really interested in becoming an expert at micro stippling on my long arm because I can do that so well on my home machine. So it's important to understand what certain machines are good at. A long arm is better at making big sweeping movements, you know, great big arcs and things like that. Stitching stippling on a two to three inch scale is going to be much easier on your long arm than trying to micro stipple with it. Uh, likewise, on a home machine, making those big sweeping movements is hard. You know, it's tough to shift a quilt that much on your home machine. So making those tiny little fine precise movements, micro stippling on your home machine is actually easier. So it's good to understand what these different machines are good at and where they really shine. But as with all things, I think that you can stitch any design on any machine so long as you're willing to practice and have patience with it and keep throwing more thread at it. More than anything else, the more stitches that you get in under your belt, the better you're gonna get. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and you'll come and check out more Frame Quilting Friday videos at leahday.com frame. Until next time, let's go quilt.